All right, I wanna uh, thank the organizers for the opportunity to be here virtually today um, to share my postdoctoral research on neuronal mitophagy. Neurons are highly polarized, terminally differentiated cells, meaning neurons must be maintained for the lifetime of an animal. Axonal transport is required for the supply and clearance of proteins and organelles, as well as for spatiotemporal signaling. And due to this unique polarity, neurons rely heavily on mitochondria to support local energy demands at fusion sites that can be located far from the soma. So to put this in better perspective, this is a motor neuron drawn to scale. This tiny red dot in the upper left-hand corner represents the soma, and this long line continuously winding back and forth is the axon. So from this depiction, I think it's pretty easy to see how important it is to know when and where proteins and organelles like mitochondria are within the axon and how defects in these maintenance mechanisms can lead to the progressive functional and structural degeneration of the neuron. So damaged or aged mitochondria are removed from the cell in a process termed mitophagy. This constitutive pathway can initiate via increases in cellular oxidative stress, or we can induce mitophagy in cells using chemicals that damage mitochondria, such as antimycin A. Within this pathway, you have damage to the mitochondria. This leads to the stabilization of pink one on the surface, which can recruit parkin. Together, these two proteins start to phosphoubiquinate other outer mitochondrial membrane proteins, and this leads to the translocation of optineurin and TBK1, which recruits an autophagosome or a double membrane structure that sequesters that damaged organelle. This autophagosome can then fuse with the lysosome, where lysosomal enzymes start to degrade and turn over that damaged mitochondria. So this pathway was originally characterized in non-neuronal cells, where we can see the recruitment and formation of Parkin and optineurin rings around these damaged spherical mitochondria. So surprisingly, there's actually little is known about the regulation of mitophagy in neurons. Genetic links suggest that expression of mutated pathway components inhibits mitophagy leading to the buildup of damaged mitochondria, which can cause cell death and degeneration over time, suggesting that mitochondrial turnover may be a key mechanism contributing to neurodegenerative diseases like ALS and Parkinson's disease. So when we saw this, this suggested to us that the temporal dynamics of neuronal mitophagy may be critical. In non-neuronal cells, we know that the time from initial damage to engulfment within an autophagosome takes less than an hour. So with this knowledge of pathway components, as well as the time course, we asked how molecularly and temporally conserved is this pathway in neurons? So to address this question, we used primary hippocampal neurons where mitochondrial damage was induced via global oxidative stress through antioxidant removal, or we use low doses of antimycin A. And I'll note that we use these mild treatments because we wanted to mimic highly metabolic cells. Then using live imaging, we can monitor the temporal dynamics of these various mitophagy associated proteins to the damaged organelles. So we can visualize optineurin recruitment to the mitochondria following antioxidant removal by taking Z-stacks confocal images through the soma of a hippocampal neuron. So these events are highlighted by arrows throughout the movie, and we can see that they occurred throughout the soma, as you can see down here by the different Z-depths. Again, you get the formation of this nice optineurin ring around this spherical damaged mitochondria. We next determine whether optineurin recruitment was specific to damaged organelles. So within these experiments, we utilize TMRE to observe the health of the mitochondria. So the absence of a TMRE fluorescence signal indicates a damaged organelle. So we routinely identified optineurin rings 
that were positive for the transfected mitochondrial marker. However, they were negative for TMRE, suggesting that optinurin translocation is specific to damaged mitochondria and that we can use this to positively identify mitophagic events like this one shown here. So using this paradigm, we induced damage and asked how quickly do mitophagy-associated proteins translocate to the damaged organelle. So within, within an hour of damage, we observed the recruitment of Parkin, ubiquitin, TBK1, and LC3. And again, all of these mitophagy-associated proteins, they co-localized with optineurin around the damaged mitochondria. And this translocation occurred within the predicted time frame from what was previously characterized in non-neuronal cells. So we then looked at the final stage, which is lysosomal fusion and acidification to fully degrade the damaged organelles. So to observe the temporal dynamics of lysosomal fusion, we scored optinurin positive mitochondria as either being LAMP1 positive or LAMP1 negative. And we did this at various time points. So in basal conditions, we saw that most mitophagic events were LAMP1 positive, suggesting efficient lysosomal fusion. In induced conditions, we observed less than half of the mitophagic events were LAMP1 positive, indicating that mitophagy induction may overwhelm this pathway leading to stalled events. However, it does appear as though the system can begin to recover, shown here by the increase in the LAMP1 positive events after six hours of antioxidant free compared to the one hour. We then repeated these experiments, but instead looked at lysosome acidification using Lysotracker. And surprisingly, we saw that most events were Lysotracker negative, suggesting lysosome acidification is slow in either basal or induced conditions. Additionally, this phenomenon appears to be specific to neurons as efficient lysosome acidification in HeLa cells occurred one to two hours after damage. So to confirm these findings, we utilized a dual labeled LAMP1 reporter where we could simultaneously visualize lysosomal fusion and acidification. So non-acidified organelles are dual labeled with both the SEP and the RFP, but in acidic environments, the green SEP signal is quenched, leaving only the RFP. We again identified optinurin positive mitochondria, and we found events that were LAMP1 negative where lysosomal fusion hadn't occurred, events that were dual labeled with both the SEP and the RFP, indicating a non-acidified organelle, and events that were RFP only, suggesting a degradative competent lysosome. And consistent with our previous findings, we observed that most mitophagic events in either basal or induced conditions were dual labeled and remained sequestered in non-acidified organelles for hours to even days after initial insult, further providing evidence that lysosome acidification is a rate limiting step. So we established a novel mitophagy induction paradigm that induces low levels of mitochondrial damage without compromising the entire mitochondrial network. We monitored the temporal dynamics and determined that autophagosome engulfment is efficient However, lysosome acidification is a rate limiting step specifically in neuronal mitophagy. So we think that these slow kinetics may act as a point of vulnerability where alterations to the system may impede the rate of turnover, increasing the neuron sensitivity to damage and neurodegeneration. So to conclude, I wanna to return to the unique characteristics of neurons and draw your attention to the huge challenge neurons face to preserve the health of millions of mitochondria throughout this highly extended network. Again, where many of these mitochondria are located in the axon and far from the soma. So today we focus specifically on mitophagy as a mitochondrial quality control mechanism, but additional mechanisms exist to continuously survey mitochondria within the neuron. 
Mitochondrial fission and fusion events may serve as a first line of defense where mitophagy is the final step. But basal autophagy and mitochondrial derived vesicles may contribute to repairing mitochondria or removing terminally damaged organelles. However, we, yet, we don't yet understand how these pathways are coordinated to support mitochondrial preservation in neurons. So my future research program aims to define the mechanisms driving these diverse quality control pathways to elucidate their relative contribution to mitochondrial maintenance in both homeostasis and disease. And so with that, I'll thank my wonderful advisor, Erica Holtzbauer, as well as uh, the Holtzbauer Lab, my funding sources, and of course, all of you for your attention and sticking around to the end of the symposium. Thank you.